Hello, in today's video, we're going to be replacing the control arm on this 1996 Toyota Camry. This vehicle has a problem with the control arm bushing, and if we grab the rotor and caliper, moving it from side to side, you can see all the movement on the bushing, which shouldn't be there. An issue like this can cause a lot of problems, but the more common problems are steering shake, or making the vehicle feel unstable, since that tire on the affected side will have a lot of movement down the road, due to the fact that the bushing is unable to keep it stable. To get started, we're going to want to remove the wheel, but to do so you're going to want to lift and support the car with a jack and jack stand. I also lifted from the other side to take pressure off of the sway bar since we got to detach the end link to remove the control arm. But with our wheel off, the first thing I do is remove this cover held on by two bolts that we use a 10mm socket to remove. With that cover off, we now have better access to everything. Now to disconnect the sway bar end link, we'll use a 14mm socket to loosen the nut. But normally that doesn't work so well, since the middle tends to spin with the nut. So we'll have to hold the middle as we loosen the nut. And for this, I'm going to be using a 5mm hex fit socket. And to loosen the nut, a 14mm ratcheting wrench. Rotating the wrench counterclockwise as we hold the center. Once we get it out far enough, we should be able to remove the rest by hand. And with that nut off, we can move the end link out of the way. To separate the control arm from the ball joint, we're going to use a 17mm socket to loosen the bolt and the two nuts. Once we get them all loose, we can either remove them or leave them on loosely for now. Now to loosen the control arm to frame bolts, we'll need a 19mm socket to do so. And for this bolt, I'll be pairing that up with an extension so it clears all the components. Once we get this first one loose, let's move over to the next one and get that one loosened as well. For this one, I use a short socket 19mm and an adapter because the longer socket hit against the CV axle and wouldn't allow us to get it perfectly straight. With this one loosened as well, we can go ahead and remove both of the bolts. With both of those bolts off, all we got left is this rear control arm bolt to remove. We'll be using a 19mm socket for this one as well, but this one is going to be really tight, but eventually loosens up once the tab on the nut grabs up against the subframe.
Once it's out far enough, you should be able to remove this nut since you will have to position it when reinstalling the bolt. And once you get that off, you'll want to pull back on the bolt since the control arm will hold on to it. And here we got our bolt. Now we'll guide the ball joint studs off of the control arm. The control arm should now only be held at the back by the control arm bushing. And to get it off, we should be able to pull back and wiggle it out like so. That rear bushing must be in really bad shape as well. Just look at all that movement. And here we can see why this thing's barely attached. When you get the new replacement control arm, you're going to want to transfer this bushing stopper from the old control arm to the new one. After cleaning it up a little, of course. But here we can get a better look at how much play this bushing had. And even this rear bushing was halfway torn and in really bad shape as well. After we get it cleaned up, we place the bushing stopper in the same location that we removed it from on the old one. And if we check the movement on our new bushing, it's very rigid as it should be. Now to install our new control arm, we're going to want to place it into position. Then we focus on lining up the rear vertical bushing, positioning the control arm so the bushing is able to slide in straight like so. And this is about how the control arm was sitting so I could get it lined up. Now we can install the vertical bolt and we're going to have to thread it into this nut. But what I do is I install the bolt moving the control arm. Or you can use something to pry against the bushing so the upper part lines up with the hole, allowing the bolt through. Once you see the bolt threads partly in, we're going to want to stop there. Then I place the nut into position. Rotating the bolt as I hold the nut till the threads catch on the bolt. Once they do, we can bring down the bolt a little more. And leave it kind of loose for now. Now to line up and install the two bolts on the horizontal bushing. The longer one being for this rearmost bolt that has the bushing stopper on it. Threading it in by hand and leaving it partly loose. Then install the next bolt hand tight for now as well. Followed up by reinstalling the ball joint to the control arm so that we get everything to line up. Let's go ahead and get these two nuts and the bolt installed. These ball joint nuts will have little self aligning collars to get the ball joint lined up properly as you tighten them. So if you're having difficulty getting the bolt back in, just tighten down the nuts so they can line up the threads for you. And as you can see, the bolt is much easier to get on now. Once they're all in, let's go ahead and start tightening them. Now 
And finally, torque them down to 94 foot-pounds. Tighten down these two bolts. And now torque these two spec, which is 152 foot pounds. And for this last one, we can bring it down, but don't want to torque it yet till the weight of the car is on the ground. Reinstall the end link and the nut, holding the middle as we tighten it down. This one should be replaced since the boot is torn, but I'll do that once I have the parts. Reinstall this lower splash shield with the two bolts. Reinstall the wheel, followed by the lug nuts, and then tighten them in the star pattern. Then finally torque the wheel. Once the weight of the vehicle is on the ground, we can complete the last step by torquing down this rear control arm bushing bolt to 152 foot pounds. And with that, we complete this video. I hope you were able to find it helpful or informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.